Okay, back at it again with some new news and some news I didn't get to earlier uh, today. It's basically just filming one video after another right now at this point, but it is what it is because a lot of news is happening when you gotta cover all of it. So obviously, as we know, one of the major things that has been trending everywhere right now is that um, DEFCON been ratcheted up. So uh, Russia and Putin has gone on high alert for nuclear deterrent. And that is not good. We do not want to see that, obviously. Uh, this comes at the same time as some positive news, uh, assuming you can kind of call it positive or potentially positive news comes out. Ukraine agrees to hold talks with Russia at the Belarusian border. So after a phone call with the Belarusian leader, Ukraine president agreed to hold talks with Russia at the Belarus border. Also on Sunday, Russian Vladimir Putin has ordered the military to put his nuclear forces on the highest level of alert in response to what he called an aggressive statement by NATO countries. Now, as we know, this comes with a history of Putin manufacturing threats in order to ratchet up aggression, does it all the time. As you can see right here, they will hold talks um, at its border with Belarus near the Chernobyl exclusion zone after a phone call between the president um, of Belarus and Ukraine. They've been taking the, um, uh, the to the streets, the fight to the streets, as you know, so Lots of stuff happening there. Something to look at. Obviously, Russia um, and Putin earlier today, through, as uh, you can see, uh, ordered everything on DEFCON 3, I believe, or and put everything on high alert. I'm not actually sure about the um, DEFCON. So we shall definitely see how this goes. It might just be posturing, of course, before the main talk. Um, let's look at some. There's OK. Let's look at actually another piece of news about the Russian banking system first, and then we're going to get to this only fan news, which I did not get into earlier sorry i know it's kind of weird to go from you know potentially nuclear war to only fans but you it's 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 a crazy time and it's a, and it's gonna be a crazy video so that's <laughs> is what it is uh russia cut to junk rating by s p moody so moody's comes out and does here let's look real quick as you see, it's an investment grade. So Moody's and Investor Service Rating System Securities are assigned a rating from AAA to C, with AAA being the highest quality and C being the lowest quality. Moody's was founded by John Moody in 1909 to produce manuals of statistics related to stocks and bonds and bond ratings. So Russia's um, Moody's rating has been cut to junk. It's the junk rating, right? And they that's in. P global ratings cut Russia's credit rating to junk status and lowered its rating for Ukraine as well, obviously, citing risk following uh, Russia's invasion by its neighbor, excuse me, Russian invasion of his neighbor. The rating company lowered Russian's foreign currency debt to BBB plus from BBB negative, placing it below investment grade. The change could force funds required to own investment grade bonds, right? So this, this triggers a reaction. It's an automatic triggering. Seen as having a lower chance of default to dump Russian debt that has already come under intense selling pressure since troops entered Ukraine. SP lowered Ukraine from B minus uh, or to B minus from B. So it can, and lots of these institutional investors, schools, um, pension plans, et cetera, are all, uh, institutional investors, and th if they do not have a good grade, that which means they do not think that they can get you know returns for the next thirty years, then they're going to uh, cancel it, and it's going to be uh, very very bad economically for uh, the Russian people as a whole, unfortunately, and but also for the Russian government. As we saw earlier today in videos, we saw. Um, videos of people doing a run on the banks, a video of Russians going to the ATMs and taking their money out. Let's see if we still have that up. Hold up real quick. As you can see right here, uh, this is a good article from Newsweek. Russians withdraw $1.3 billion from their bank accounts during Ukraine invasion. It's a way to really screw up your own economy, right? Uh, businesses and individuals drew $111.3 billion rubles, equivalent to $1.3 billion. The problem with this is, well, there's lots of problems. Um, and the problem with this is that it will potentially lead to, and I think it's already doing this, as we've seen from the videos, uh, going to a, a run on the bank. So people are taking money out and they don't have enough money in the banks. Like the banks don't have enough money to process this. This happened during Black Friday, right? They take so much out and then it leads to more uh, banks closing, more people taking it out. And it really kind of could potentially collapse the whole system, which you know might save the day in this whole thing. All right, let's go to the, the OnlyFans news. Twitch and OnlyFans block all users from Russia due to sanctions. The military operation in Ukraine 
announced by Russian uh, Vladimir Putin, president, obviously, um, has already cost the entire Russian economy dearly, as major countries, including U.S., Europe, and U.K., have found it necessary to impose crushing sanctions. As a result, the Twitch and OnlyFans services decided to block all users from Russia. Um, which, having done this due to sanctions risks, now users of these platforms, popular among fans for making money via the internet, are deprived from the opportunity to withdraw money from their accounts, including those that were earned before the uh, adding like the sanctions in, right? So Twitch and OnlyFans users from Russia complain that these services has disabled the ability for them to withdraw money that was earned on the platforms because of this. Some cannot withdraw their income in their accounts for a week, month, and even years. And this actually is kind of a, a sad story in my opinion because um, you know the main people that are getting hurt through all this are not the governments, right? Are the actual people, right? The people at the top, um, you know, Vladimir Putin, etc. Probably a trillionaire by now, and you know he is not hurting for money, and will never hurt for money. But it's the people that are trying to support their family, the people that are trying to uh, support themselves, are the ones that are getting crushed, right? You see all the average Russians as be defined as just the average you know person in russia you know taking money from the banks panicking doing all this and it's just so sad to see in all way shape or form so okay so when we did the earlier video today we saw that the broader cryptocurrency market was down it is ticked up a little bit um this is all going to be um more questions answered Monday because Monday will be when we have the stock market open again. And there's been a pretty good correlation between the S&P 500's performance and the cryptocurrency market's performance. We hopefully will get big enough one day that we don't need that. But for right now, that's how it's done. Bitcoin back at uh, 39 might potentially uh, be able to hit back into the 40,000 range today. We shall see. That being said, Ethereum up. They're all up in the seven day. Excuse me, not, they they not all are, but um, the big daddy and the big mama Bitcoin Ethereum up on the seven day chart and you know not doing too poorly on the uh, one day chart if things kind of keep on going as they are right now i would expect it to be a pretty good monday but you know who knows justin uh china supreme court just declared bitcoin transactions illegal if caught making a transaction violators will be criminally prosecuted with a punishment of up to 10 years in prison and fines of up to 79 thousand dollars of course this caused a big blip into the cryptocurrency markets for a second but for right now not doing so much it's almost like well they screwed it up and now no one is is counting on them and i don't think it's enough to affect markets right now right used to be enough to affect markets don't think it is right now as we can see here is uh some alive news with the ukraine uh, peace talks hopefully happening very very soon um that would be just I think it's just such a blessing if that did happen. Of course, Russia, as we know, is still on nuclear high alert. And this is just wild. And this is something you definitely don't want to see. Um, the UN amb U.S. ambassador to the U.N., which used to be Samantha Power Powers, I think, uh, wrote a phenomenal book called The Education of a martyr no not education of a martyr what is it education of a i don't know something like that um fantastic book really really gets into depth around u.s international um, and foreign policy as the uh, ambassador to the u.n which she was for many years under obama and then i believe they started a new kind of cabinet position for her and she went into another one but anyway putin escalating is in unacceptable manner with nuclear and high alert um u.s said to the UN and uh, France joins other nations closing airspace to Russia once again just in a whole um, kind of a coordinated effort to cut them off and just make them feel very very isolated um, as we know Ukraine is raising crypto donations to fund army against Russia I think they brought in over five million um, by this point and many many uh, more to come I would imagine I don't know uh, how the governments are adding to um, this or not i don't know if that's like a violation or i don't know what they're doing i don't know what they're doing i know germany is sending um uh, i think believe weapons um to it as we can see ukrainians civilians stop russian occupants tank with bare hands as we can see right here tons of them coming scary scary time look at that and it's such a wild world to have a war going on um with to have a war going on with the, the live cell phone service, live coverage, live video, just to be able to see it so 
full hand, which is, I think that's why, I mean, one of the, one of the many, many reasons why um, the world has been more peaceful in general, right? Because you just, it's very hard, I believe, to continue to sustain the appetite for war when you see just the human element of it. I just think that that's, those things just can't go together. This is F from both sides. Imagine being a Russian soldier and having hundreds of seemingly unarmed civilians coming towards you. Do you open fire on hundreds of people? I know I couldn't. So do you let yourself be disarmed and taken prisoner? That's also terrifying. Although it's there's been reports, at least some self-reports from um, Ukrainian officials that they are you know capturing Russian soldiers and allowing them to call their parents, uh, allowing them to... Uh, chat. This is just something that was trending on Reddit. Take it or take it for what you will. I'm not sure most American voters realize the heroic Ukrainian president everyone was praising is the exact same guy. Donald Trump was impeached for trying to extort. So very, very interesting. So that is your news right there. Um, lots going on. I will hopefully be back for a crypto and uh, Bitcoin and safe moon update later today. We'll see you soon.